Okay, so uh, welcome to the new unit on momentum. Um, momentum is one of these things that um, you probably have a sense about already because it's one of these words we use in everyday language. In physics, um, specifically we say that any moving object has momentum and that is going to depend on two factors and that's going to be the mass of the object and its velocity. And in fact, the momentum, um, the formula for momentum uh, is rho is equal to m times v. This uh, this little funky P looking thing is actually the Greek letter rho. Where rho is the momentum, m is the mass in kilograms, and v is the velocity. And note we're um, saying velocity, not speed. And that is because momentum is a vector quantity. Um, the direction is going to matter, so it has both a magnitude and a direction. Um, now, if you look closely, you can um, figure out the units for momentum yourself. Since it's just mass times velocity, the units are kilograms times meter per second, so a kilogram meter per second. Um, we'll learn later that this can also be written as Newton times seconds. And if you do the dimensional analysis, you can find that a kilogram meter per second is the same thing as a Newton times a second. So um, a couple of examples here. We're going to calculate the momentum of a train. So imagine this train, uh, about 92 tons, traveling at 80 kilometers an hour. Uh, first thing we can do here is we'll just convert 80 kilometers an hour into meters per second by dividing by 3.6. So that's 22.2 .2 meters per second. And then since momentum is just mass times velocity, a mass of 92 tons is 92,000 kilograms times a velocity of 22.2 .2 meters per second gives us a pretty impressive 2.0 times 10 to the 6, or 2 million kilogram meters per second. So um, something with a little bit less momentum would be, say, a baseball. So imagine a baseball with a mass of 0.14 kilograms. Um, we're throwing it at about 100 kilometers an hour, so at 35 meters per second. How much momentum does this have? Rho equals mv, and 0.14 kilograms times 35 meters per second is going to give me approximately 4.9 kilogram meters per second of momentum. Now, if you were to compare that <clears throat> to, say, a bowling ball, so imagine we've got a bowling ball that's much more massive, how fast would it have to be moving in order to have the same momentum as that 100 kilometer an hour fastball that we just threw? Since rho equals mv, um, v is equal to rho divided by m, and so this same momentum, 4.9, divided by now a larger mass, 7.6, is just uh, not even one, it's just 0.64 meters per second. So for a bowling ball to have the same momentum as a 100 kilometer an hour fastball, it's barely crawling along at less than a meter per second. Another way of thinking about this, these two objects having the same momentum, if they were to collide with each other, then their two momentums, when they collide, could, could perfectly cancel each other out. And so obviously, since it's much more massive, that bowling ball doesn't need to be traveling nearly as quickly. Okay, so um, we're just going to talk briefly as well about uh, changes in momentum. So you'll recall that a change in anything is just going to be final minus initial. And the symbol that we use for change is the symbol delta, that little triangle. So imagine we've got a situation here where we're throwing a water balloon against a wall. Okay, so we take the water balloon and it's whizzing along this way and then it smashes into the wall and explodes in a spray of water okay um the ball uh sorry the balloon i should say was initially moving at 32 meters per second and then when it hit the wall of course it's going to come to a stop what is its change in momentum so a change in momentum is really a change in mv but if you think about it, in most normal uh, situations, what's going to change is the velocity, not the mass, right? And so in this case, in particular, we can write this as m times delta v. Substituting in our mass, um, 0 0.50, and then final velocity being 0, minus our initial velocity of 32 meters per second, gives us a change of momentum of negative 16 kilogram meters per second. So something to think about there, why is it negative? What's with that negative sign right there? Well, if the balloon was traveling to the right and then it stopped, the wall must have pushed back on it to the left. And so it had a bunch of momentum and in, in a way it lost that. So we could think of that as being a negative. 
Now, as a comparison, what would happen if you were to throw a bouncy ball against the wall? So think about the same situation. Somehow this bouncy ball has exactly the same mass as that um, as that balloon did, but when it hits the wall, it's going to bounce back at essentially the same speed. So while it's traveling towards the wall at 32 meters per second, it's going to bounce back also at 32 meters per second. Now, <clears throat> I think if you sort of try and reason it out, it's not exactly intuitive. Uh, we might get a sense that this balloon hitting the wall, because it impacts the wall and it smashes into the wall and bursts open, that it has a really big change in its momentum. But at the end of the day, the ball, uh, the balloon, sorry, was going to the right and then it stopped. Whereas this ball was going to the right and then it bounced back to the left. And since we're interested in velocity, not just speed, if the initial velocity here is 32, then the final velocity would have to be negative 32. And when we do a calculation here of our change in momentum, 0.5 times negative 32 minus 32, we're actually gonna get a change of negative 32 kilogram meters per second. So this bouncy ball actually had double the change of momentum because if you think about it, the balloon was traveling to the right and it stopped. The ball was traveling to the right and it eventually came to a stop when it was in contact with the wall, but then it actually flung backwards. And so it has a much larger change of momentum overall. All right, that's it for momentum.